Welcome to Neurology Live Peer Exchange Discussion. I'm joined by a panel of my colleagues, all experts in the field of multiple sclerosis. We are very excited to discuss highlights from our internationally attended Consortium of MS Centers meeting held recently, defining updates to the MRI protocol and clinical guidelines. I'm June Halper, a certified nurse practitioner and the CEO of the Consortium of MS Centers, and I'm joined today by a distinguished panel. On my left is Dr. Frederick Barkoff, a professor of neuroradiology at the VU University Medical Center in Amsterdam, Netherlands, and the Queen Square Institute of Neurology in London, University College, London. On my left, again, is Dr. David Lee, Professor of Radiology, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Dr. Scott Newsom, to my right, is an Associate Professor at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and President-Elect of the CMSC. And finally, last but not least, Dr. Tony Trabulzi is a Professor of Neurology at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. Thank you so much for joining us today, and let's begin. So, Tony, please tell us why and how this all started and why we needed this meeting recently. Thanks, June. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, imaging using MRI has been one of the most important tools in diagnosing and following patients with multiple sclerosis and giving us a much better idea of how the disease uh, evolves. And um, my former mentor, Don Patey, was one of the early pioneers of using MRI to understand and diagnose patients with multiple sclerosis. And, Early on, he recognized that there was a need to use this tool practically in, uh, for clinicians and to take what we learned in research and adapt it to clinical practice to make it a, a, a broadly used uh, a, a technique. And so we, over the past two decades, we've been working on evolutions of these guidelines, a, a protocol that is easy to use in clinical practice, gives the necessary information, but importantly provides reliable data over time if we're making treatment decisions and uh, diagnostic decisions based on imaging, we need good quality data uh, so that we can compare studies over time to detect this clinically silent disease. And the guidelines really reflect the evolution of technology, the evolution of knowledge around how MS is developing uh, so that we have the best care possible for our MS patients. And uh, an international group of colleagues around the world have been contributing to the development of protocols. And um, this was a great opportunity to meet again, to see where we're at in terms of the technology and to see how we can improve the guidelines even further. So David, who was at the meeting? Well, th this meeting, we had the people who have gathered in the past, neurologists and radiologists who uh, are experts in the field of multiple sclerosis. But additionally, for this particular meeting, we were fortunate enough to gather together people from the industry, people who make the MRI scanners and also take the information from the MRI scanners to process them to produce quantitative measures. And then we had also representatives from the National MS Society and the Multiple Sclerosis uh, Association. Um, so it was a group that was able to talk about the guidelines, but also help us try to disseminate and implement these guidelines. And that was why we thought it was important to particularly bring the vendors abroad so that they could help us with what we needed to do. Yeah, it was great. Um, when we first started, uh, Fred, years ago, we were it. And now, of course, it's become an international effort. And I understand you're involved with Magnums in Europe, and I'm so pleased you were able to come over. How do you see this process evolving in terms of trying to align this internationally? And do you think that might happen? I, th I, I would hope so, because I don't think that MS is, is fundamentally a different disease in, in Europe, where, where I come from and where the Magnums network uh, is, is active, uh, or in the United States or, or Canada, for that matter, or even outside those regions. Um, and um, our own group, the Magnums group, has been working on issuing guidelines on how to best perform scans, but also to think of you know, what, to, what part of the central nervous system to image and when to image. Uh, and these are evolving things because also the, the demands are changing. The process was mostly focused on diagnosis and, and, and increasingly it's about monitoring treatment and making treatment decisions, uh, picking up safety signals. Um, meanwhile, the machines are changing, so you have to take advantage of that uh, without being carried away too much. 
Um, so uh, I had the, the pleasure to already contribute to a previous iteration of the CMSC guidelines in 2006, I think it was, uh, and, and vice versa. There's been cross-fertilization with the Magnums groups. You know, we obviously read one another's guidelines. So it's good to see that this is you know, uh, getting closer together and, and it's great to collaborate between North America and, uh, and Europe. I think one of the challenges we've had, isn't it, is trying to determine are we developing a research protocol or guidelines versus a clinical practice guidelines and I think the Magnus group has really been focused on clinical practice as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it, it, it is originally a research network, so we do a lot of collaborative research projects and we review evidence about new avenues of research, disease insights, but we also try to um, make a difference in clinical practice for patient care. Uh, and then you often have to compromise. You know, there are things that we do in our research studies, which you know I would love to translate to clinical practice, but they're often difficult to implement. So you have to be realistic and, and make it practical so that you develop protocols that can be used uh, everywhere and, and well interpreted and, and don't get carried away too much by uh, fancy sequences.